Oh man, this thing is a huge. It's even bigger than my workbench. Hello everyone, welcome again in another video. In today's video, we're gonna unbox and review the X Tool S1 40 watt laser engraver. So stay tuned until the end of the video. The first thing that I noticed that the box itself is bigger than my workbench. So let's open the box and see what's inside it. Now I have reviewed many lasers on the channel, but this one gonna be one of the most advanced lasers that I have reviewed on the channel. Maybe I made a big mistake by not opening the box or doing the unboxing on my main table. I think here we have the instructions. We have two straps here that hold the whole laser together with all the parts that are included. We need to remove these two straps. Now I have to say that the package itself top notch. Nothing to complain about, well protected, all four corners are protected. So I think getting a damaged product here is really not the case. So here we have the honeycomb. Third thing that I noticed that this is heavy and in comparison to even a bigger one that I have here, this thing is not as heavy as this thing, although this thing is much bigger than the X tool one. Now let's remove it to the side and continue the unboxing. So I want to remove this cover and here we have that laser. The dimension of the laser are 18 centimeter in height and 55 in depth around about 77 in width. Now I have to remove this protection cover. Let's hear this sound together. Here I think we have some material to test. Here we have another box that contains also some hardware and some screws and other stuff that we will need to assemble the laser. Underneath we have the hose that will extract all the fumes that will be generated from cutting or from engraving. One of the coolest thing that Xtool does really well that they work on the keyboard identity. Most of the companies they get lazy when it comes to designing their own products and they try to get from here and there stuff just to finish their product and start selling. Xtool have designed their assist by themselves and here you have a unique one. Inside this part we have the laser and some cables. Here we have the power cable, I believe this is for the AC adapter and we have the Xtool 40 watt laser. And last but not least, here we have another box that contain the AC adapter and we almost done for the whole unboxing. So let's start with the adapter, here we have 240 volt, this is the EU version and we have a 25 volt with 11 amps. Here we have a small block that need to be removed that holding the X axis in its place from sliding along the Y axis. So we need to remove this on the other side. There is another one with removing the sticker of course. To do so I'm gonna use the included hex screwdriver. I think this is the 4mm one and it's as easy as it can get. Now I have to slide the X axis out and then cut to this zip tie and reveal the Z holder here. Here we have the laser. I'm gonna take this out from the package. Well it looks very elegant and it's compact compared to other lasers that I have tested. Nobody is full aluminum as you can see here. Now we have to attach the cable and the air assist to the side of the laser. Here we have a bin that's uh, proud of the surface and we have two points of magnets and by placing the laser it will hold itself until you put the two screws here. 
I will use the same hex key to attach the laser. Now I can go ahead and install the sensor that it has two magnets on the side and can be just installed with laying this down to the side of the laser. Now I will turn the laser to the other side just to be able to attach the hose and see how it looks from the back. To attach the hose we have to remove this cover by unscrewing this four screws. With using the same four screws I can attach the hose again to the laser and secure it in its place. Here we have different types of inputs. We have first the power supply. This you can connect to your computer. And here you have to insert the key otherwise the laser will not work at all. And by plugging USB-C in this plug you can connect your air assist and will be powered through USB-C cable. To attach the air assist tubing you just insert your tubing here and it will hold itself by itself. It has a mechanism that will prevent it from getting outside accidentally. Here we have our air assist. We have to connect the tubing again to the back side. Just insert it and you're good to go. The power supply as I said will get powered from the back of the laser. They have included two keys in the toolbox. You can take one as a backup and the other one insert it inside the laser. Whenever you are done you can take it off and nobody will have access to the laser. I just noticed that the port that I told you that will power the air assist it's not type C but it's other kind of cable so I'm sorry for that. And that's it for all the connection on the back side of the laser. Before turning the laser on you should make sure that the emergency stop switch is not pressed. If it's pressed you have to just take it out and that's it. Now I have connected the holes to extract all the fumes outside my woodworking shop. Now I can place the honeycomb pad. Now I can go ahead and turn on the laser. After turning on the laser I have connected this to light burn and I added the pre-made settings from the X tool page and now I am clicking on homing. Now Xtool has added different types of material with different sizes and thicknesses. So let's see what's inside the material that I got included in the box. The first material that we have here I have no idea what the hell is this. Anyway we have here four circles. I think those are stainless steel and those are glass. With the glass we need to give it some coating to be able to engrave on it with a dual laser with a stainless steel this is no problem at all we can do it here we have some kind of stone I have worked with this material before and it looks awesome after engraving here we have another material which is this piece of leather I have no idea if this is natural leather or not but I don't think so it looks absolutely gorgeous so we will do something on it to see how it looks. Here we have a plywood a sheet that we will use it also to do a material test to see how the laser will perform. And last but not least we have the black acrylic sheet and as long as your acrylic contain color you can work fine with the laser but if it's transparent then you have to have CO2 laser. One of the coolest feature of this laser that you don't have to measure the height between the laser and the material that you are working with. This will be done automatically from the Xtool S1. Let's see how this works. To use this feature just click on detect and light burn and the laser will do the rest of the job. Let's see this together. Mm -hmm. 
Now the first thing you should do whenever you get a laser to take the material that you're gonna work the most with it and do a material test just to see which feeds and power should you use on your laser. Let's do our first material test. The pointer is a very useful tool. It will show you where the laser is gonna cut or engrave. So you can save a material and be safe that you are gonna engrave over your material and not in other place. Now I turn my ventilator on, let's start our first cut. So as you can see here, this is the test that we just did and it's totally wrong. This is not something that we can depend on. Those triangles all they should be squares instead of triangles so I updated my light burn and now it's working. So I can now go ahead and do another test right here and see the result. So we did our first engrave test and we're gonna do a cut test on the side here. The first one didn't work well, the second was perfect, was about engraving and the third was cutting but also didn't work well just because of the triangle shapes. I will try to contact X2 just to know how to solve this problem. Here we have one pass and we are going from 20 millimeter per second to 200 and the power from 10% to 100%. And like that you can choose which one will suit your needs depending on how deep you want to engrave. And again the same for the cutting test. You should take a look and check both sides. Here we have the other side. You can see that this was too much of power and too slow and you can choose the best speed and power for your material. For example, in my case, I have here by 40% and six millimeter per second was the best and the cleanest cut. But this of course always will depend on the material that you are using. Even if you have the same thickness, maybe the kind of material will change the speeds and the power and will require something different. One thing worth mentioning that the Xtool S1 profile that was provided on their website, officially it's not correct. There is many settings that need to be changed. For example, the laser offset should be changed to other uh, measurements that what they uh, shown on their website. Now let me show you how to set your offset in light burn. To the settings here, so your X should be minus 0.86 millimeter and your Y should be 26.25 millimeter. Those are the settings that you need to put in your light burn and then you click OK and you're good to go. Now let's do another test on this area just to show you how accurate the settings are now. It's exactly in the middle and that's what you want. They both align over each other's the Y and X axis. Now let's do our first cut for today. I have here 3 point 6 mm plywood. Now I did the first cut without an air assist. Now we're gonna do another one but with the air assist turned on. This was really bad with the air assist off so the air assist should be always on. Either you put it on max or you put it on automatic that's up to you. Now let's move to the serious work. Here is our first serious test for this laser. Here we're gonna test the accuracy of the laser. Here I have this image. This is JPEG and this is the point. If we click here and click on preview, we can see how this will be engraved. Let's see the result and remove the original one and start engraving. By the way, this is the real speed one to one. 
here you can see the result is not bad at all for extra fast speed that I set it up in uh, settings it was 100% power with 200 millimeter per second why we cut the square off from this plywood now I will do the same test on this stone but I will be using a lower speed just to see how this will perform here we have a stone so it's not gonna engrave so deep and we can play with the settings as much as we want this is what we got here this was 200 millimeter per second and 100% power I can feel it here on the stone it feels like etching I like the result here you can see like it's kind of 3d result on the stone on the wood was like 2d very cool result I will remove all this to the side and we will try another material let's try this piece of leather so what I did here I just draw two rectangles and I will cut them for my tail vise as you can see here it's very clean cut very sharp corners and yes I'm very happy with the result one of the coolest feature in X tools that differentiate this machine from others out there that you can engrave on curved surfaces. Let me show you how this will work. Here I have X tool software and this software will allow you to do a lot of other things that you cannot do it in Lightburn. If we click on the top here we can see here I choose curved material. You can choose flat or with a rotary tool. Here I'm choosing curved material and clicking the, on that and click on the setting. Again, in here I can choose two points to know the surface that should be scanned with the sensor. Let's see this together. Let's lay a piece of wood that has uneven surface, as you can see here, and I will choose this area to engrave on. And here we'll see, in a, and you will see in a minute why I choose to focus on calibrating the pointer. We will take the X out, and then we will take the laser slide it until we get the 90 degree corner perfect on the piece of wood. Now we have just to click on mark one and then we choose the other corner and click on mark two. Each time you click on mark, the sensor will go down and the laser will measure the height of the material. Now I just click on next and now choose how many points that you want the measuring to be applied to. After that the program will show us where the area that we allow to engrave on as we have chosen this before. You can just adjust the size as much as you want and start engraving. Well, let's start our program. As you can see here the result is astonishing. This is something that you cannot do with a normal standard laser that does not have a movable ZX. Overall a very nice machine, nothing to complain about, having the movable ZX is also a win for my woodworking shop. I should do much longer video about it but it will be boring so I have to stop now. And until this point to reach the end of this video, thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like if you want to. If it's like, just like it. And follow me on my social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I will catch you there. Stay tuned. See you the next time. And until then, peace.